Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. We're going to uh, give it a few seconds to let a few others come online here and uh, test some slides and uh, we'll get started here just very, very soon. Go ahead and let you know a little bit about myself. My name is Scott Harp. I'm actually a wildlife biologist for the agency. I'm what's known as a regional coordinator. So I oversee one of the department's uh, five planning regions for the wildlife division. I've been with the agency for working on 19 years now as a wildlife biologist. So I'll go ahead and getting into it today. We're going to talk about some of our wildlife management areas and the opportunities that they provide across the state. Um, if you guys don't know, you're probably familiar with what's called a program coordinator. We have guys that work for the wildlife division who oversee our bear and our deer and our turkey and things like that. But we also have regional coordinators that oversee these five regions of the state. And these are the regions that we have established that focus on physiographic regions roughly of the state. And you have one of me, a regional coordinator, who oversees that region. Now across the state, we have about 89 wildlife management areas, accounting for over half a million acres of, of public property to use for, for access and recreation. Uh, this, this graphic up here showing the red WMAs doesn't even include our national forest or our military reservations or LBL or anything along those lines. This is just the state's WMAs, which we call wildlife management areas. And I'm also including what's known as habitat access areas um, or hunting access areas. Um, so the wildlife management areas are basically areas that we own or operate and we, we open up for public use and hunting and wildlife viewing and things of that nature. But the hunter access areas are, are cooperatives that we have with private landowners to where we can work into a cooperative agreement to allow hunters and, and sportsmen to access those areas as well. Uh, but when you include all of the access across the state that that's provided for, for public recreation, you come up to about one and a half million acres of, of available property. Now specifically when we talk about our wildlife management areas, the, the first priority is always public access. We want to we want to have these properties open for you guys to come out and enjoy and provide good opportunities for you to enjoy. Um, and secondary to that is, is our main mission is to manage that habitat. <clears throat> so we want to take what's there and make it better so that not only do you guys get the benefit of it immediately, but hopefully through, through conservation practices, it'll be there for our grandkids 30, 40 years from now. Uh, as an instance in this picture right here, this is a, a large 100 acre field at Big Rivers WMA, which was when we, when we first received that several years ago was just a pasture ground. It had very little wildlife value, but now that has been converted into a short grass prairie. Uh, it's great for bobwhite quail, for uh, nesting songbirds, uh, a, whole, a whole range of species. We do numerous types of habitat practices on our wildlife management areas. <clears throat> Uh, prescribed burning is one way. Uh, when we're looking at, at more open type habitats, we use pr prescribed burning a lot to set back succession. And what that means is to basically kill trees and to kill larger types of, of growth to set it back to that, that lower grassy type growth. That's great for turkey nesting, for, for dropping fawns in and things like that. Uh, and we look at in our open lands, something that's, that's really taken a new initiative right now is pollinator habitat. You see the forbs here on the right, the wildflowers. Those are great for our pollinating insects. Um, if you saw the, uh, the Habitat Live, the, uh, the live episode a few days ago, you saw the one on monarch butterflies. And this is exactly what we're trying to promote on our WMAs as well. Uh, we we want to take care of, of all of our diverse species all of our diverse species that we're, we're mandated to manage for. And you guys can help us out with that as well. Uh, Kentucky Wild is a program that's going on right now that the agency has that, that lets you guys help us with those types of endeavors if that interests you. So we also like to encourage natural vegetation. Uh, anytime that we can, we like to encourage natural growth on our WMAs. Uh, we do plant a lot as well, but the natural vegetation usually has a better, a better, uh, a more diverse nutritional base to it, a nutritional value that will withstand the different uh, flooding periods or, or weather conditions that may 
that they may sustain over an extended period of six months or so. So if we can encourage natural growth, like you see on the left here, we always like to do that. But food plots is also something that we like to provide on our WMAs. Uh, we like to say that food is not necessarily limiting on most of our WMAs, but when we make plantings like this for food plots, they make great wildlife viewing areas. If you guys are out taking a hike and want to see a, a, a flock of turkey or something like that, they're great places to focus on. They're also great areas to concentrate animals for hunting, for hunting opportunities. Uh, and you get into more of a, a, a wooded type habitat, a forest type habitat, like you're going to see in East Kentucky, we like to focus on, on that timber stand management, whether that be prescribed fires in there. We'll sometimes run a fire through those, uh, those wooded habitat types to, to remove that leafy duff layer. And what that does is encourage that undergrowth to jump up, provides more food and more habitat for the animals that are in that, that habitat. On the right, you see a, a cultimulture here, right here, which is going through and removing some midstory. Some of our woods will have some, some midstory component of like solid maple, which is not providing a lot of habitat, a lot of food for our wildlife, for our native wildlife. So we like to go in and, and try to remove some of that, that midstory that, that's not providing, not providing that benefit. And that lets a little bit more light down onto the ground to give us that, that flush of growth. So just all different, different types of examples of, of what we're doing. We have a lot of WMAs, well several WMAs, SLU's WMA, Ballard WMA, Boatwright, uh, that focus specifically on, on wetland management. And so what we do in those, we, we have to manage those water levels to encourage a lot of that natural revegetation, that natural weedy growth. And uh, that's done by drawing those down in incremental stages and reflooding them in incremental stages. And by doing that, we can provide a food resource for, for waterfowl or wading shorebirds throughout the whole winter. Another thing we do that's, that's on the fishery side is we like to, to renovate some of our small fishing ponds and fishing lakes that are actually on the WMAs. So we know we have these WMAs that center around huge lakes like Cave Run or, or, or Green River Lake. But we also have fishing opportunities on smaller one acre to, to 100 acre ponds or lakes on our, on our WMAs themselves. And we'll go in and renovate those, uh, draw them down, fix any leaks, put some habitat out and then allow those to, to refill and restock and, and they're good to go as well. So the reason we're out here doing all of this stuff is to provide the public with, with opportunities. And like I said, our number one priority is to provide public opportunity on our management areas, whether it be access and then hunting, fishing, hiking, wildlife viewing, target shooting, many, many uses that you can utilize when you access these areas. One of the things that we have going on on the WMAs that's a, a really good opportunity, especially for our sportsmen, is our quota hunts. We have one of the best quota hunt systems in the nation, in my opinion. We have 16 WMA-related quota hunts. We implemented over the last couple years some archery quota hunts into that mix as well. They're always very popular. We have uh, pheasant quota hunts on uh, Yellow Bank WMA, Green River Lake WMA, and Clay WMA. So if, and, you, and you really don't have to be a, uh, a true upland hardcore bird hunter to get out and enjoy one of these pheasant hunts. Uh, I've been on a couple myself without a dog, and, and you, can, you can take pheasants without even having a dog. So let's look at some of those. If, if, you've, if you've ever wanted to do that, you don't need to be an expert to get in on those quota hunts. Uh, we have daily waterfowl blind draw quota hunts on uh, SLU's WMA and Ballard WMA. And we also have a, uh, a youth mentor dove hunts across the state to let, to let adults take out juveniles to uh, have, a, have a better quality hunting experience. So most of our quota, hunt oper most of our quota hunts are drawn for, sep you apply from the month of September, so September 1st to the 30th, you can log on and apply for most of those quota hunts. Dove fields. Most of our what we call tier one WMAs. So within our planning regions, we have multiple tiers of, of management on our areas. So a tier one area would be heavily managed and heavily staffed, whereas a tier three would be mostly just access and, and keep it in it open. Uh, and sometimes that's due to size and sometimes that's due to location of where it's at in proximity to current staff. But most of our, our heavily utilized large 
tier one WMAs are going to provide Duffields for, for the public to utilize come September. And we focus on those a lot and we like to provide that opportunity because they get a lot of use. Another thing that our WMAs like to provide uh, or that we do provide with our WMAs is mobility impaired access. So we have 15 areas across the state where if you have a mobility impaired permit issued by the agency, you can, you can, have, you can have enhanced access on those areas through mechanized means. Um, and it's not the whole area, there's certain tracks on each area where you allow to use these, these uh, enhanced, enhanced access measures, but it's also something that we, that we try to promote and let, let our mobility impaired hunters know that it is available to them if, if they're having trouble getting around. The first thing you need to know when we're doing a, uh, when we're talking about WMA information is where are our WMAs? Now I popped up the map there that showed all that red and all that stuff, but we need, we need more information. And our website is always going to be the first thing that you should go to for more information. It's very simple. It's only two clicks. You go to hunt, public land search. That's going to bring up every WMA or every cooperative cooperative hunting access property that we have in the state. It's going to bring up not only the WMAs, the hunter access areas, it's going to bring up Daniel Boo National Forest, LBL, everything. And these are really great because it gives you a really quick one-stop shop and it tells you exactly what's going on at these individual areas. So for instance, we look at Barron River Lake w, WMA here. Allen and Barron counties, 8,700 acres. But the main thing you notice is that phone number right there. As much information as you can glean from these websites, you're still probably going to have a couple questions. This phone number right here goes directly to the area manager for that property. If you want to know specifically what's going on at Barron, call that number. The biologist there or the foreman there will answer that call and give you all the information you need specifically for that property. So I encourage, your, I encourage you to just make your first stop to the website here and uh, do, your, do your background information on what the area offers. Barron here offers, it offers hunting, fishing, hiking, boating, wildlife watching, and mobility impaired access. So you have all that information right there. The other good thing is it links to a more information and will take you to an area map. So right from here, you can go straight to the area information it lists all the regulations that you want to know for that, for that WMA. And then you can click on the viewable map right there. And it's going to bring you up a map of Barron WMA. So this is always going to be your, should be your first stop whenever you're looking for a WMA or doing research on a WMA. And your next stop should be that phone number. So getting into the five specific regions that we have in the state. We start out way out west in the Purchase region in the Jackson Purchase, more of that Mississippi alluvial plateau type area. And it's, it's really a different world out there with their wetlands. And if you've never been, it's, it's a good visit. We'll focus on Ballard WMA just for a minute. Uh, 8,000 acres there in Ballard. And I'm sure a lot of our sportsmen are familiar with Ballard. But I wanted to just pop up the map real quick and show you how it sits exactly on the Ohio River. Ballard lives and dies by that Ohio River and its flood stages and what's occurring. All of this is a wetland. Well, the vast majority of this is a wetland system. Uh, and as such, Ballard is known pretty much across the state for waterfowl. They banned thousands of waterfowl there every year uh, through, their, through their rocket netting or their, or their, or their uh, waterfowl traps. They uh, collect those ducks and geese and they will band them and release them and track them for, for data. Um, so thousands of waterfowl run through that area. And that, like I said, that's pretty much what Ballard is known for, is providing that opportunity for, for hunting. They have that, that daily blind draw that allows, or that daily unit draw that allows individuals to come out and, and heavily utilize that resource. Uh, and again, Ballard lives and dies by the Ohio River. And it's not the only thing it's known for is waterfowl. Ballard still is known and is still our highest, our highest uh, sought after quota hunt for deer in the state. 
Uh, we get more, more uh, applicants for that quota hunt than any other. And with the river out like this, you're going to say, well, there's no opportunity there. Well, there is. There you could also, like right now, the river pretty much, the area pretty much looks like that right now. And we have guys out who are uh, bow fishing off their boats right now. So that's a good resource. There's always something to do out there. The Green River region here is in the western coalfield portion of the state. That's my region. That's the one I like to call home. And I'm going to start out with uh, Big Rivers WMA. Big Rivers is also a state forest, so it's jointly owned by Fish and Wildlife and Kentucky Division of Forestry. It's one of our newer WMAs, 7,500 acres in Union and Crittenden County. We've only had it for uh, six or seven years. I would argue that Big Rivers WMA is probably the most scenic place in our state as far as, as, far as WMAs go. You have a beautiful view. This is what we call the overlook. It's a viewing platform that we have built out on the overlook. It, looks over, it overlooks the bend of the Ohio River across from Cave and Rock. Uh, and on the right, you'll see another, uh, you see another uh, what we call Caseyville Bluffs, which is a sandstone formation, which is a really neat geological feature there that runs for a couple of miles on the WMA. So very, very neat, very... Uh, scenic type of property if you want to get out and take a walk. But make no mistakes about it, Big Rivers WMA is known for deer and turkey. Uh, some of the best deer in the state, the best, the best deer hunting in the state, and some of the best turkey hunting in the state. It's number two in the region for turkey harvest, and it's, it is by far our most sought after uh, quota hunt. Uh, Big Rivers WMA actually implemented the first archery quota hunt for, for whitetails in the state and it's been a huge success. That allows us to maintain the quality of the animals there and to also provide those, those quota hunters with a, with a very high, a very uh, quality experience. Peabody WMA is another area that's in the Green River region. It's our, large, our, larger, our largest, sorry, our largest state-owned area. It's in Hopkins, Muhlenberg, and Ohio counties at just over 45,000 acres. Known for, uh, for quail management, for small game management. Peabody is reclaimed strip mines, so that's what it has to work with, is that, that early successional type of habitat. And for the last decade, they've heavily pushed it and done a great job with it. That's not only benefited the, benefited the quail, but it's benefited the rabbit, the rabbit hunters, and also those uh, what we call state wildlife action plan species, which are focused for grassland habitats, such as Henslow sparrows, Dick Sissels, Bell's vireos, things of that nature. But, but Peabody is amazing for fishing. I mean, I lived there, it was my backyard. There are over 300 lakes or ponds on, on Peabody that are one acre of size or larger. Uh, that is a ton of fishing opportunity. And, and there are some great fish there. Uh, you, can, you can fill a cooler with pan fish, plenty of catfish, plenty of bass, and like I said, plenty of opportunity. Peabody, uh, the local Peabody staff there, the local biologist there, is actually working with the fisheries division biologist right now to implement a, a, a project on the area to increase parking and boat ramps, um, fishing docks, and things like that this summer. So that'll be a big project going on hopefully this summer at Peabody once we, we lift some restrictions. The bluegrass region, we have... Uh, what we call the Golden Triangle. It holds about two-thirds of the state's population and probably the lowest number of public available WMAs or public accessible hunting lands. And so we have to, we have to maintain those and, and monitor those in a special way. And one that I wanted to highlight here was the Kentucky River WMA in Owen and Henry counties. It's 3,600 acres. If we pull up the map on that, Again, this is just the map that's linked onto that website I showed you, our website. So it's, it's your first and best resource. You see that we have several different tracks. And that's great for, for where this is in the region of the world because it helps people spread out. And you can also see that there's a mobility impaired unit on the south end of this, of this WMA. Um, and it splits both sides of the Kentucky River there. So it really helps people spread out and, and, uh, and move around. And we want to remind everybody that as you're using our, our WMAs or using your WMAs this weekend to, uh, 
especially for turkey season, and we expect a good turnout this weekend. Just to just to have have good respect for your neighbors, for your other hunters on our on our public properties, and also for those property boundaries. Uh, Kentucky River WMA, it's got a lot of diversity. Uh, it's in those, it's in those uh, lower bottomland river bottoms of the Kentucky River, so it's really rich. It has a good, a bl a good uh, plant component. It's heavily managed. There are a lot of hunting opportunity there as far as the, the habitat management to do, the food plots that they put out. It's also one of the best in the state for uh, dove fields. I mean, I don't know what they do out there on those dove fields, but if you want a good, good, a good dove field, West Kentucky WMA generally has some of the best dove fields in the state. And you can't, you can't not talk about Kinman Lake up there. Kinman Lake was uh, recently opened several years ago and is one of, the, one of the best places in the state right now on a WMA to get a, to get a trophy largemouth bass. Northeast region of the state. So we're moving into a, we're moving into a more wooded type of, of habitat here. Uh, very steep, uh, mostly, like we said, Appalachian Mountains, woodlands. We'll focus on clay WMA. Clay is in Nicholas, Fleming, and Bath counties, and it's almost 9,000 acres. Clay, I like clay because it has a very diverse mix of habitat types. We have not only open lens, open systems here that we, that we manage through prescribed burning, uh, and, we, and we get these, these native type prairie situations back, which we manage for those early, early successional type of species, but you also have this intense forest land management to where we go in and, and we do manage for forest openings or we manage for savanna type habitats and things like that. And due to that diversity that you see on clay, you have a diversity of species use. I mean, clay is a great WMA to go to if you want turkey, deer, uh, bobcat for trapping. I mean, just about anything you can hunt, you can pretty much find on clay. And that's a result, a lot of that, not only of where it's at, but of, that, of that, that diverse habitat mixture. Another neat thing about clay is they have a habitat map online. And that, and that you can find that, uh, it connects straight to where you would find the WMA map. And what's great about this is, check this out, I mean, it's got every food plot that's on the area marked. So if, if you want a place to go and you live close to there and you're like, man, I don't know where to start. Right here's a good place to start with this habitat map that Clay has online. And not only has food plots, but it has their dove fields, where they've conducted prescribed fires, uh, where they have wildlife watering holes. So all of that is just really neat and a great resource for you guys. And then we get to the southeast region. Uh, southeast region is blessed with the most public land available for access. We're going to focus on uh, Green River Lake for, for this talk because it's very large, it's got a lot of opportunity, almost 21,000 acres. So Green River Lake WMA is a, is a great opportunity in the southeastern region of the state. It's known for, for great fishing. It has walleye, it has muskie, it has largemouth bass, it has about everything that you want to fish for at Green River Lake WMA. It's also known for a great deer hunt, but probably what it's least known for, which would be considered one of its one of its best resources, which is probably underutilized, is waterfowl hunting. They also do a, a season-long blind draw at, at uh, Green River Lake WMA that is exceptional for, for waterfowl hunting. So anybody that's in the southeast that says, well, I'm not really in waterfowl country, check out Green River WMA, Green River Lake WMA. And again, that was just a quick rundown of what we are offering through the state for our opportunities on our wildlife management areas. And uh, we didn't want to make it too long and drawn out. We went through five or six WMAs, but again, we have almost 90 of them across the state. Jump on that website, check it out, find some next to you, get out this weekend and do some turkey hunting. Appreciate you guys staying with us today.